What's up everybody? Hey, it's Brian and welcome back to the BG Model Workshop. You've already seen the thumbnail, uh, so we know what we're talking about. And again, we're talking about the Californian kit. So, uh, we got this in the Christmas gift exchange that we hosted here for the Model Car Mafia, our local car club. And um, we did some horse trading with our friend Chuck. He got this, wasn't really into it, so traded, traded for it. You've all heard the story. But um, I'm just now getting started on the kit. I've kind of tinkered with it, kicked around some ideas in the past. And I'm finally getting ready to start working on it. So what do you do when you start working on a model kit? You do a little bit of research. That's what I like to do. A little bit of research. Go on the internet, check out the Google, do some Google uh, photo research. You know, type in such and such vehicle, list of pictures, and just start scrolling through. And sometimes I get my inspiration for the build that I want to do from that. Um, I already had an idea where we wanted to go with this and we want to try and make this look like something that the Riddler would have driven in the comic books or something like that. Uh, you know we have a couple of Batmobile kits I think it'd be really cool to have a Riddler car I thought that would be kind of fun and since this particular car here is kind of a question mark in itself about what it is I thought this would be a good candidate for such a build. So that's kind of the direction we're going in. Um, so I thought, well, I'm going to see if we can find some photographs of the actual car that this model is made of. I couldn't find anything. So I was like, okay, that's uh, that's odd. Maybe, maybe it was a custom car. So I did some more digging and I didn't find anything about it. And then I found uh, on Scalemates, I went to Scalemates to see the, if there was a history behind the kit and found out that the kit was originally released in like 1966. And uh, 1966, 1968, somewhere in there, and then was repopped again in 2022, uh, which is the release that I have here. And there's a there's a, one distinction on the box, box art that I noticed uh, that I hadn't noticed before, but check this out. It says... Uh, it's the uh, swinging luxury sports car, right? Well, in the current issue of this kit, the swinging luxury uh, 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 car has been um, changed from Harry Bradley's luxury sports car. So I thought, okay, that's a big clue. Let's go look up Harry Bradley. I wasn't familiar with the name. And did some research on him, quick some quick reading. Uh, it was basically fueled by ADD and Coke Zero. So did some quick research on Harry Bradley and found out that Harry Bradley was a guy who had uh, gone straight into the GM design firm, straight out of design school. Designed cars for GM, but while he was working for them, he was also designing and doing um, design work for uh, a lot of the popular car magazines at the time. And turns out GM back then had strict rules and regulations against doing design work for hot rod and custom cars. I'm not sure why, but it is what it is. And um, uh, Harry Bradley actually ended up designing the Diora show car that was built by the Alexander Brothers. And that's why the Alexander Brothers credited the designer as Designer X because Harry didn't want his name to be associated with that because he was still working for GM at the time. It's a fascinating story. I, I believe there's a book out there about his, his life and history, and I'm, I'm uh, going to be looking into getting that book itself. Um, I, I love the whole idea of car culture from the 1950s and 60s, and everything that spawns from that, be it model, plastic model kits, Hot Wheels cars, and actual one-to-one -one custom and um, and hot rods. So, yeah, this this box art here, the the original box art photo I found on Scalemates, really unlocked the whole thing. So, it seems like, and if anybody else knows any more information about this, I would be happy to hear from you. Uh, but it seems like this was a design exercise by Harry Bradley for MPC. Because after he left GM, I think in 1966, I think it was, uh, he went to go work for um, Mattel designing Hot Wheels. And it turns out he designed 15 of the original Sweet 16 Hot Wheels, which would probably explain why there was a Diora Hot Wheel that came out in that series, if I remember correctly. So since he had direct hand in designing that particular car, it makes sense to have that show up. Uh, in the Hot Wheels series, so a little bit of uh, trivia there, perhaps. But um, 
And it says that after he worked at Mattel, I think he left in 1968, uh, he went on and started his own design firm, designing uh, for magazines again, and uh, custom and show cars, and also for plastic model kit companies, like MPC. So uh, just a little bit of information there I wanted to share with you guys, because this box art does not do this kit justice. It is... Um, it is an interesting kit in its own right, um, I guess is the best way to say that. But uh, we'll take you down to the bench here and show you what we got going on. All right, so down here at the bench, these are all of the parts that were chrome that I decided to go ahead and uh, strip the, uh, the plating off of because I'm thinking we're going to go with a nice gold tone for some of the bright work. And I think that might go well with the green color that we've chosen for the Riddler car. Um, and we have this all just mocked up. It's not glued together. We just it's all press fit together just to see how our stance was and it is riding high in the front That's going to be a complication. Uh, this kit has metal axles that go um, As the axle <laughs> Well said Brian, thank you, but um, in the front here. It's very interesting because uh, There's a oops a subframe that's supposed to go underneath and you can see where the axles are going to be captured in there so I'm like oh I just file those down and I can raise raise the wheels up a bit but then it hit me there's a transmission in here transaxle I should say that that metal axles are going to be going through and if I lower the suspension with that metal axle I'm going to be moving that engine out of the car so um, which could be a cool look but that's not really where I want to go with it um, one last bit of uh, trivia about Harry Bradley I'd like to mention that uh, I'm, I'm neglecting to earlier is that he actually passed away in May of 2023, this, this actual year. So that is very interesting that uh, we're working on this car here in the very year that he passed away. So um, this rolls really nice, actually. Uh, so lowering the front end is going to be a little tricky. I think we'll, 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 we'll figure it out, not to worry, but I just want to take a look at this body shot style here. And this is very interesting because this, the way this car looks, this super long front, and that's a Tornado and Cadillac Eldorado uh, hallmark right there. But this fastback treatment and stuff here, this, I mean, this looks like kind of has a little bit of a javelin look to it. Uh, has a little bit of maybe a 70, 71 charger going on there. And then I really like this body mold right here, this mold line. That is really slick. That's just very, very racy looking, very Mach 5, you know. So it looks like there's a Mach 5 stuck to the side of the uh, of this Tornado. But um, the kit does have some, some uh, extra parts in it that, from my research, turned out to be... Um, from other editions of the kit because this specific one has only been popped twice but um, there's been other flavors or other parts of this kit uh, probably not the body but the interior and definitely this but uh, yeah um, different aspects of this here have been probably used so something that was interesting is it's got two different sets of seats for the front uh, it's got this bench seat here that I don't really care for. We're not going to use that. We're using the bucket seats. And then it's got a completely different tail end. So it's got the more stock looking tail end. That looks probably better. Actually, it looks like a Thunderbird tail end right there, right? Well, that's not going on there. <laughs> yeah. So it's got like the Pontiac Catalina style tail lights on there. Uh, so yeah, all kinds of weird little bits and stuff like this custom grill that doesn't go with anything. Ooh, excuse me, should not have had Taco Bell before I started recording. And um, this is uh, more of a stock looking steering wheel. I'm going to be going with, wait for it. Here it is. I like my little bins. I got these from my buddy, Chris. Thanks, Chris. I'm going to go with that one. That is cool. I like that. I like that yoke style. Uh, very custom looking, you know, so... Um, yeah, just all this stuff here we're not going to be using. So some hood scoops, two different types of hood scoops, and then there was some roll bars in there, some padded roll bars. So I thought, okay, that must have been a race car version of this at one point. But um, we've got, you know, got plans. We're working on some plans. Um, we just got this in the mail the other day, and this is a stencil. We got this from Etsy. Hey, there's me. Hi. This is a stencil 
of question marks, a couple different sizes, and it's an adhesive back stencil so you can stick it to whatever surface you want to be spray painting or airbrushing over. Um, and I'm thinking that we'll do is we'll slice off or cut off different question marks and stuff, and then we'll stick them all over the car in different angles and in, in, in directions, and then we'll uh, airbrush over the color we want to use for the question marks, and then uh, peel those off, and it's going to look awesome. <laughs> so that's the plan. So yeah, we got this this adhesive back stencil from Etsy, and what was the lady's name that created this? It's a, the Miss Lady Creations. So. Um, it's on Etsy. I don't have a link or anything like that. It was something that Mrs. BG had sent me. So, uh, I got that. And then I got a buddy, my buddy Chris, I just mentioned about these. Um, he said he'd be happy to help us out with some 3D printing so we could do some question marks. We want to do, uh, ruler star question marks on the hubcaps. I thought that would be kind of fun. And then I would love to do something like a question mark or something on the front of the car here too. I thought that would be a slick thing. And then that her shifter that's sticking out there, be kind of cool to have a question mark on top of that as well. So um, I'm going to try making that out of maybe milliput, something like that, something we can form and, and just make the squiggle part and uh, see how that goes. But uh, that's basically the plan for this car here. I, I did have a color spoon painted up for it, but um, a friend of mine... <laughs> Mr. Casagrand Mike uh, was experimenting with something on there and it ate the paint off there. So uh, I do have more spoons around here someplace, but I honestly goodness don't know where they got off to. So I, I have a color base plan. And uh, so you'll just have to trust me on that. <laughs> all right, y'all. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for all the wonderful comments and support you've been giving us over the last few weeks, few months, few years. Greatly appreciated. And of course, we always know that there is other model car content on YouTube you could be watching. And we want to say thank you for wanting to spend time with us. All right, y'all, take it easy and we'll talk to you in the next one. More updates on this one coming along, along with other builds that we got because there's group builds, group builds, group builds going on. Y'all take it easy and we'll see you later. Bye now. That is a sweet piece of engineering right there.